hello everyone and welcome to the very first uh, GraphXD workshop. Uh, so this is a, a BIDS project. Um, this is the location of BIDS you're in right now. Uh, one of the primary focuses or one of the missions of BIDS is to um, try to connect different people and different domains uh, that are interested in data science. And as part of that, uh, GraphXD, well, as part of this, there's a bunch of XDs across domains. Uh, there's an image XD uh, that some of the people here are involved in you can talk to. Uh, there's also a text XD, and this is the first GraphXD we've got going. So this talk is just the intro to uh, what I'm hoping this will be, and uh, that's gonna start with asking, what is a graph? Uh, so the first part I'll begin with is a little bit more abstract, uh, you know, just sort of abstractly what a graph is, uh, and then we'll get more into some data ideas. So I think everyone knows this, but, uh, you know, basically, a graph's gonna be a set of vertices connected by edges. Uh, often we draw pictures like this. Uh, in this case, we have a, um, you know, five different vertices and two, three, four, five, six edges. Uh, and it's undirected, so there's just lines between them. Sometimes you'll see arrows, and those will be directed. Uh, formally, we often represent a graph, uh, maybe call it G, as a pair of uh, two things, vertices and edges, often called V and E. In this case, uh, they'd be one, two, three, four, five for the vertices. Uh, and then you've got these uh, unordered pairs, so one and two, or two and one, same thing, uh, is one of the edges. Uh, but there's another perspective that I think we'll see a lot today. Uh, there's many different perspectives on what a graph is, and we'll see many of them. This is one of the other ones I think we'll see a lot of, which is a matrix perspective, and I think a lot of people have seen these as well. So uh, I've just moved the graph up into the upper corner here. Uh, here we again have the vertices and edges listed. Uh, and this object here is called an adjacency matrix. Uh, it has a one in every position uh, where there's an edge. So if you um, look at all the rows, they correspond to the vertices one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, columns likewise. So if you write off the first row, uh, you could say that um, the very first vertex is connected to the vertex two, three, and five. Uh, the second vertex is connected to vertex one and three, and so on. Uh, this is undirected, so it'll be symmetrical. Uh, if you had a arrows in there and it was a directed graph, then um, you would only have uh, one, two, say, instead of two, one, and one, two. There's another uh, graph uh, matrix that's important called the Laplacian, uh, and it's a degree matrix minus the adjacency matrix. So uh, this is the matrix from the previous page, and we're going to take it away from this diagonal matrix, uh, who on the diagonal has the degrees of the different vertexes. So um, the degree of a vertex one here is the number of edges that are going are connected to it. So we've got one, two, and three vertices or edges. So we've got a three up in our degree there. And I'm just going to have a very, very brief statement about linear algebra. We will see more about this later, but um, I thought uh, this might give you a little flavor of uh, what might be to come. Uh, it also maybe remind you of some words that uh, if you're not familiar with them now, uh, you may want to ask someone during the first tea break uh, for a quick refresher, or you may want to go to Wikipedia or something. Uh, not necessary. I think all the talks will be self-contained, but that might uh, make your enjoyment of the talks a little bit more pleasurable. So we've got these two things. Uh, so if we go back and look at these matrices first, you'll see that um, they're square, uh, and ones we'll look at often will be symmetric, so if you were to flip uh, this matrix about its diagonal, you'd get the same matrix back, so A is equal to A transpose. So uh, anytime we have a square matrix A, uh, there's these two ideas um, of eigenvalue and eigenvector pairs, and these are, in general, like if a matrix operates on a vector, it's gonna take that vector in some new direction with a stretch, perhaps, uh, but there's these special directions where uh, it keeps in the same direction and essentially just scales it like as if the matrix was operating just like a scalar. Um, well, exactly as if. Uh, so in this case, uh, anytime you have some vector uh, that's acted on by A, uh, equaling some uh, scalar times that vector, uh, we call that scalar an eigenvalue and that vector an eigenvector. So you'll just need those words. Um, then in the case we have the symmetric matrices that have real numbers in the entries, uh, we get some nice properties. So um, in particular, uh, if we have an n by n matrix like that, uh, we get n not necessarily distinct, real numbers uh, for the eigenvalues. Uh, since they're real instead of complex, we can put them in an ordering. Uh, and that ordering is what I think is called the spectrum. I, I think it's that, not the vectors. Um, so when you hear spectral graph theory, uh, that's the kind of idea that you're gonna have, is that uh, you're looking at these different matrices that graphs represent, or represent graphs. Uh, and then you're going to be looking at some sort of eigenvectors and eigenvalues of those. And you'll see, hopefully, lots of examples of that. Okay, so now we'll move away from the abstract idea of a graph to a more concrete uh, example, and this is where we're going to get data in here. Um, and so first, you know, like, where do graphs from data come from? And we'll have lots, hopefully, of examples uh, in the audience, uh, in the talks, and we'll share those with each other. Uh, but, you know, just to give you some flavor of this, uh, vertices might be things like 
uh, people or animals, um, genes, brain regions, random variables, some more abstract things, some more concrete things. Uh, it's often the case that um, in applications, our vertices are kind of given to us, uh, not always, but um, they're normally the things um, that we know, and then the edges are something we're trying to figure out what kind of edge we want. Uh, it's not always the case. Uh, but these edges could be things like interactions. Um, so if you're looking at uh, people, you could look at a social structure of like who interacts with who, who's friends with who, who talks to who. Uh, Co-occurrence, you can just look at you know, things that show up at the same time. So uh, I think Stepan had um, uh, an example where he worked with some scientists. They were looking at sharks, and they were just watching sharks that showed up in the water when you threw out uh, blood in the water at the same time. Um, edges can be given to you by expert knowledge. You might just go and ask someone that knows that an edge goes here, right? Uh, you could talk to a doctor or someone else in some field. Um, you can also sort of estimate these things. You could uh, look at co uh, empirical correlation. Um, you can look at conditional independence. You can think about causality and on and on. Uh, so now let's even get more concrete. Uh, we're gonna look at a very specific example. So the example is gonna be us. Uh, so I sent out a questionnaire to um, 30 of the participants uh, a week ago. Uh, some new people have added on since then, so you may not know what I'm talking about, but uh, hopefully it'll be obvious. Uh, in that survey, I asked uh, everyone to you know, say some stuff about themselves. So first, I was just getting some attributes about the vertices or the people. Uh, 25 of the 30 people I sent it out responded. Uh, and then I asked a bunch of specific edge questions where I'm basically asking people to tell me where the edges are, and I'm just observing it. Uh, so in those, those cases, I asked people who they collaborated with, uh, who they communicate with, uh, who they're familiar, whose work they're familiar with, uh, and whether they didn't know them. Uh, also, I asked them a bunch of using questions, so uh, using their software, their data, or their algorithms. Uh, and you can notice right away probably um, some of these objects, or some of these edges, probably seem like they should be undirected and some might be directed. Uh, yeah, so I won't ask you, but yeah, just pause and let you think. Um, but I would probably guess that uh, collaborate, you know, so if you're my collaborator, we're probably both collaborators. Uh, if we personally communicate, probably symmetric. Um, but being familiar with your work is not necessarily gonna be a symmetric thing. Obviously using your software doesn't mean you use my software. Uh, and then at the very end, I'm gonna sort of have a, a fantasy about um, if I collected some other data, what I might do to infer edges. Um, so now uh, let's look a little more concretely at these vertices and the attributes. Uh, so this is, um, again, the only 25 of the 30 respondents, uh, 25 out of the 30 people that were asked responded, uh, and there's more people, I think, here than that or about that number. Uh, so uh, of the people who responded, uh, most of them were researchers, uh, then postdocs, then PhD, and then some faculty. Um, and some other as well, and I think there's some industry people here now as well, but uh, it's still gonna be largely in the research postdoc, it looks like. Um, then I asked people, and that was all, everyone had to select one of those. Uh, for I work in, people got to select whatever categories they work in, and that typically means that people selected more than one category. Uh, you'll see that computer science is heavily represented, uh, math and the natural sciences are as well, and then a little less uh, statistics and software development. Uh, we also have at least of those 25 people who responded, there's at least one person that does some work in humanities, uh, and four people that do work in social science. We also have some people from IT, so, you know, security, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I also asked people a bunch of things and then asked them on this, you know, sort of quantitative uh, scale of whether you never do something, whether you seldom do something, whether you often do something. And then I asked people whether they, that thing was collect data, analyze data, uh, design methods and algorithms, implement algorithms, write scripts, and write software packages. Um, and I would guess the summary I would make from this is that you know we're not a big data collection bunch. Uh, we're not entirely absent there, but uh, we're much more on the algorithm development and implementation side of things, uh, with some people who write software packages as well. Um, again, you know this is not indicative of the whole group, so there might be a little bit of differences, but just to give you a flavor. Uh, now that we sort of know a little bit about these edges, um, and uh, you know it also uh, we know more about the edges, right? So um, we have a list of the participants, uh, which. We know their names, uh, we can Google them. Um, there's also like disciplines and universities we can look at. Um, so we'll get back to that in a second. But for the edges, uh, so I asked seven edge questions. I have left off of this slide the don't know just because it uh, basically was easier to fill six things uh, than seven. Um, and so at the top row, uh, we have the sort of collaborate. So the things that, you know, at least the first two I would think were symmetric. Uh, although, if you look at collaborate, that's not symmetric to my eye. Uh, personal communicate looks a little bit more uh, symmetric to me. Uh, and my guess with the collaborate is that uh, I didn't specify any information because I didn't want to take time away from people, so I just said collaborate and people chose. Uh, that couldn't mean for some people that maybe we uh, co-author papers. Other people, it might mean that you know, we co-author uh, software 
It could mean that uh, we work on you know, organizing different events together or lots of other things, and I'm guessing that's the discrepancy there. Uh, familiar with the work's not symmetric, and that seems reasonable or plausible. Uh, there are a fair bit of people using other people's software, but uh, there's no data sharing here uh, in our respondents. <laughs> um, that's hopefully something we can talk about, and maybe that's just, there's not much data to share, but we'll see. Uh, and then use their algorithm, there's a little bit of that. Um, so I think you know, one of our issues is uh, trying to fill some of these in a bit more at this event. Um, and now let's look a little bit more carefully again. Oh, yeah, sorry, I should just, to be clear, uh, although I don't think it changes too much, um, these are the people who responded, and here's the people they responded about. Uh, and they're organized the same way, so that's why they'd be symmetric. So that row A is person A, and column A is person A as well. Okay, so here's our collaboration graph. Uh, we've got uh, 25 nodes, so you'll often people will call uh, the number of nodes and the number of vertices N, uh, and M is often used for the number of edges. So we have 33 edges here. Um, what I've done is I've drawn in on a circle. There's a lot of different ways of drawing graphs. It's not clear how to draw them. Uh, with a small number of vertices, I tend to find these kinds of things easy for me to look at. Um, just a few points here is uh, some of these vertices have no edges, uh, so that's a degree zero. Uh, this has two edges, so that's called, has a degree two. Uh, this one has four, so degree four. Um, so each vertex has a degree, uh, which is number of edges incident to it. Um, and uh, I'm only looking at just basic graphs here, so it's just uh, either there's an edge or not an edge between each one. So if I were to put in every possible edge between all pairs, uh, I'd have n choose two, 25 choose two, which um, I think is 300. Uh, so the density of this graph is the number of actual edges versus the number of possible edges. So that would be m over n choose two, uh, 33 over 300, which would come out to a density of 11%. Uh, percent. I also have the average degree here of 2.6. And uh, we'll just look at the next graph. So we've moved up, it's filled in some edges. Now we're looking at personally communicate. There's a lot more people who communicate than collaborate. Uh, now we have 68 instead of 33. The density has gone up from 11 to 23%. And now we have about 5.4 uh, average degree. Now familiar with work, we're going up a little bit more, not much. Now we're at 70. Uh, we're still at 23% density. And now we're at 5.6, so we're starting to get closer to six people uh, in degree. And then this next graph is very dense. Uh, so this is the don't know them graph. Uh, <laughs> we now have 232 out of 300 edges. Um, the density is 77%, which um, perfectly matches the 23, which is nice. I was hoping that uh, it, was a, it was a sort of, we didn't even originally put that in, we just assumed we'd guess it. Uh, but then I asked everyone to fill out every row and then quickly realized that uh, if you didn't know someone, you had to say something. So we put that in as a default option. Um, but it actually is a quite nice graph. Um, I think it means a lot. Uh, or it means something very specific for us, which means that uh, we have an opportunity here to uh, sparsify this graph. And I'm hoping that is accomplished over the next few days. Um, now, uh, inferring edges, so this is something I could have done. This is just a make-believe example where I just made up some data. Uh, so at this point, what I've got is, um, you know, looking at all 25 of us, this uh, happens to be 26, but uh, that was, I decided not to change it. So imagine there's 25 people here. On each of those 25 people, I've collected some uh, ordinal data, so ordered data, uh, over time, and so that gives me a time series. Uh, here what I've done is I've, for all uh, 25 of us, I've generated um, some correlated random Gaussian noise, or Gaussian, not noise, signal. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just made up some uh, actual thing. You know, so I, I, originally I said that here's a graph, and I put, you know, my no edges in, and then I uh, used that to generate this as part of the covariance matrix. I can, I'll share the code so you can look at it. Um, but what I do now is I take for each of those signals, I find it's a Pearson correlation coefficient, and that get, I think it's a Pearson correlation, but it's a correlation coefficient, uh, and I get a correlation matrix, right? So on the diagonal, um, we get all ones. Uh, so the scale here is uh, the reds are positive and the blues are negative. Uh, the redder you are, the more close to one you are. The bluer you are, the closer to negative one. Um, and then I uh, thresholded this, so I binarized it. So anything that was, uh, between negative six and, or 0.6 and positive 0.6, I just made that zero, everything else became one. And then uh, I've drawn in the inferred graph here. And so uh, the question is how well did we do? Uh, so this is a pretty simple method, right? Uh, you just uh, compute this correlation, which are not necessarily uh, good estimators in this sense. Uh, but I made a very careful data set, so uh, it worked. Um, and general, I guess I should say, is that normally when you do this kind of thing, you don't have the actual graph. 
Um, we have the advantage of having an actual graph, so I can compare how well we did, but in general, uh, in practice, when people do something like this, they're doing it with uh, you know, much more uh, raw data, and um, they don't know if they've done the right thing. But uh, here is what I put in, and here's what I got out. Um, so uh, I missed one edge, and I was pretty lucky with that, because I just chose the 0.6 as my first thing I looked at. Um, so uh, here's the program for today. Uh, essentially, uh, actually, did anyone still need them? Did you pass the rest of them out? There's more in the back if people need them. Um, but you definitely want to grab this and look through it. There's some questions in the back. Uh, it says a little bit about what GraphXD is and sort of my vision for it. A list of participants. The schedule of uh, events, the agenda. And the very last page uh, is a set of questions, which I'll come back to in a second. Um, so this agenda, you can see uh, there's lots of talks today and some talks tomorrow. We also have lots of uh, breaks, and we have uh, some food as well. Uh, we have a barbecue this evening. Uh, we'll be leaving here at 5 and heading over uh, to uh, Li Kaxing area, which is just on campus here, but it's outside. Um, and during these breaks and during the food, uh, we'll hopefully start having lots of discussion. Uh, so uh, you know, a big reason why we have these half-hour breaks regularly or these hour and a half for lunch is because uh, we're going to stay here, but we're going to start talking to each other, and we're going to try to take that do not know graph and uh, sparsify it. Um, so then at the end of this uh, discussion, we're going in talks and food, we're going to have some self-organized activities. Uh, that is going to be self-organized, but I'm imagining that those activities would fall in three sort of main tent categories. Uh, so it's some sort of scientific research collaboration. I won't say much about that. I'm assuming everyone here knows what those look like. Um, but I mean, ideally what would happen is people that haven't worked together might uh, over this break or the next break or over lunch uh, realize they have some that they could contribute or work together on, and maybe there'll be some collaborations out of this. Uh, there'll also be some technical stuff. So uh, there's a lot of coder people here. There'll be some sprints. Uh, some of those I've sort of set up ahead of time. So there definitely will be a matplotlib network x sprint. Uh, you'll hear more about network x later today. Um, all the uh, graphs I did, I used network x for. Um, and I use matplotlib for all the plotting. So uh, you've already seen matplotlib and network x. Um, I'm also imagining that we could have some interest in tutorials. So, uh, Maybe you're a software person, and people are interested in how you use your software. You could organize a tutorial if you wanted to do that. Uh, another thing, perhaps, is, uh, you know, and this is the data analysis outside of the scientific research, so maybe someone has a method, they just want to show other people how to use the method, or um, someone wants to show, like, someone just their data. So it's not really a collaboration, but you're just sort of showing each other um, technical stuff. Uh, and the other thing, which is something I'm interested in, in more particularly, is uh, more uh, communication-oriented things. So, um, you know, one of the things I'm hoping, this is our very first GraphXD, and uh, it's not clear to me that 100% that this is what it should be. Uh, it's not clear to me that its goals are what it sh they should be. I mean, I believe they are, but I'd like some feedback on that. Um, you know, so I was thinking some of the kinds of things we could do is uh, write uh, proposals for types of events or future events or funding for events. Uh, maybe there's a position paper or white paper people might want to work on. I also like to get a series of blog posts, so I'll be asking people individually. Uh, so if there's something you're particularly interested in or thought was uh, really enjoyable and you want to write a little blog, short blog post, that'd be great. Uh, we put it on the BIDS website, um, and we'd use that uh, to figure out uh, you know, some feedback for future events as well. Uh, and then this last object is uh, called reflection. And if you look at the agenda, um, the very last day there's a three to four discussion period, and that's followed by another hour of what I'm calling reflection. And what I'm going to do is ask uh, everyone for our sort of exit survey is instead of having a bunch of yes, no, or more or less kind of questions, I'm just going to ask you to maybe write me four to five paragraph uh, general reflection on whatever you want to do. Uh, and I'm going to provide that time here, uh, but you should start thinking about it now. Um, and I've got some questions on this last page that'll hopefully get you thinking about it. Um, so on this last page, you'll see questions. And at the very beginning, I've uh, written down what I've said are the aims of GraphXD. Uh, and then immediately, you know, this is the very first version of that. So uh, I think everything's in suspect, right? So uh, first, I want to know if those aims seem like they're useful. I want to know uh, whether those aims seem like, uh, you know, if they were achieved, if something would be useful, you know, not just that it would be useful in general, but that something concrete would happen at the end of it, and maybe a vision of what that could look like. Uh, I've talked to some of you already about, um, you know, sort of the dangers, or I don't, I don't know, the, the opportunities, let's say, uh, that there are for people that come from different fields that haven't talked together. Um, so one example I had recently, how much time do I have? One minute, okay, yeah. So one example I had recently, um, was uh, I heard a talk by someone uh, doing coding theory, error correcting codes, and when they were a grad student, they had had a, um, a joint meeting with a bunch of computational biologists. I can't remember exactly the problem the computational biologists had, but 
Uh, what it looked like was that they had some kind of procedure where they wanted to test like a blood sample or something like that. And uh, that test is very expensive, and they wanted to do it on lots and lots of people, but very, very rarely does someone have it. So what they do is they uh, sort of pool a bunch of blood together uh, into different, you know, very carefully pool them into different uh, com combinations, and then uh, you can test a much smaller number of samples, but the way you've uh, put the people in the different samples, since it's sparse, you're able to reconstruct uh, who must have been the person that contaminated the number of batches that you got. Um, and the people who had done that in computational biology had learned uh, or realized that um, you could use polynomials for this uh, if they were on a field of prime order. Uh, but immediately, the coding theory people said, well, actually, um, it's any power of a prime order. So two to any power uh, would be a, a size of the field. And uh, that was really useful for the computational biologists because they were uh, getting sample grids of like 64 or 128, and those weren't prime things. So they were wasting a lot of resources on something that, you know, as soon as they talked to a, someone in coding theory, they immediately could figure out they didn't need to do. Um, and I'm sure you guys have all seen experiences like that. I could go on with examples I have. Uh, and I'm thinking that's something that's gonna happen with graph theory as well. So uh, I encourage you during the breaks today um, to read through this and start thinking about this over and over again, because uh, I would really like some high quality uh, reflections at the end of this event. Um, and I uh, also have some thanks to do. So um, uh, Stacy has been doing a lot of administrative support for this, and she'll be continuing doing that. So um, we're very appreciative of that. Uh, Jessica gave me some feedback. Uh, Aaron gave me some feedback on my slides, both of them. Uh, Stefan and Nell are my two uh, co-organizers who also uh, not only gave me feedback, but uh, made some of the slides as well, uh, helped me quite a bit with organizing and other things, and the entire BITS community.